Okay, good. So here we have, now first of all, one of these is bigger than the other, but they're still similar, right? They're similar because, well, it says so on the worksheet, they're similar. But if you divide any two side lengths, you'll get the same number back. So our step one is going to be the same from step one from yesterday, which uh, means you want to flip the shapes the same way. It doesn't matter which one you flip. For, for whatever reason, I usually flip the second one. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do for this one. Now we can see that the angle that looks like the right angle is right there, right? Okay. This one is a little weird. Okay. Um, if it is a right angle, we can tell this is the longest side would be hypotenuse. So this needs to correspond with this. So when I flip it, if I can give myself a little bit more room down here. Yeah, I'll go back to it. But when I flip it, the eight's going to be right here. Uh, the four is going to be down here. And the seven is going to be down there. Okay, so I'm flipping this one in order to make sure it lines up with this one. That's all I'm doing for the first step. Like I said, the way we're going to do this lesson is we're going to do one step at a time. So the next three examples, all I'm going to do is just flip the shape and make sure it's flipped. What's different from yesterday, you know, we're actually solving for a variable here. Okay, and it's not, it's obviously not eight, right? Because this triangle is bigger than this one. So we know this is going to be bigger than 8. The question is, how do we figure that out? Um, yeah, we'll figure out, yes. We will end up cross-multiplying. So, yes, step one is to flip the shapes the same way. That's all we're doing right now. Okay, we've done that for example one. And I know sometimes it's not always easy to see. Like this one wasn't just rotating. We had to flip and rotate it to get it to that point. But usually if you look at the bigger, biggest side on one of them, it's going to correspond to the biggest on the other, or smallest to smallest. Um, let's do um, number five, for example, two. So once again, number five, for example, two. Um, first, well, they're both rectangles. We're not done with it. Like I said, we're doing step one for each of these examples first, okay? Number 30, uh, the top is 35. I'm going to label this X. Bottom is also obviously 35 because it's a uh, rectangle. And I know it's not on there, but if, if that side is X, then this must be X too. So might as well do that, right? Okay. The bottom one, however, is standing up. So that pretty much lets you know you need to flip it on the side. Top is 24. And then the two sides are 28. So all you have to do for this one, since the bottom one is standing up, is just flip it over on its side. Make it look like this. It's not going to be to scale. It doesn't really matter. That means now that the, this will be 24, the two, and that will be 28. And that's not working down there. Let's try this again. Okay, you'll see why we're doing one step at a time for these, because, like I said, these are a little hard. Okay. Let's go to the back. Let me talk about why this one is different, for example, 3. Um, whoops. It's different because this is x minus 4. It's not just x. Now, it won't really matter. It's just simple algebra when we solve it. Okay? But it is a little bit different. That's why the back is in your... So, uh, we need to flip the bottom, for example, uh, for step one for this one. So, that's why I chose this one, because this one's also a little bit tricky to, to flip. Uh, can anybody tell me? Or does anybody, can, can anybody see how you're going to flip the bottom? Um, just point the very bottom of the oil. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, actually, you can pretty much see that, you know, this is the longest side up here, right? 40. And down here, the longest side would be x minus 4. So we know that it pretty much needs to be flipped up. Again, I didn't draw it very well the first time. I'll try better the next time when I draw it. And it is a little bit tilted at the top. Let me try this again. <sighs> Slightly tilted. 
There we go. Well, this is not perfect, but... <laughs> Why is it zigzagging? <laughs> My screen is still not working, right? But there you go, okay? This one's actually a little bit easier because two of the sides are the same, so it doesn't really matter. Just make sure that the two, the, the two bigger sides are on top. So once again, I got 40 up here. X minus 4 down there. Okay, we'll do one more here. Let's just flip this one over on its side like we did previously. So 3x minus 3 up top. It'll be the same on the bottom anyways. It doesn't really matter. And then 18 and 18. All right, so what I want you to do right now is just flip these shapes. Some of them don't have to be flipped. There's a few that are already good to go. So the reason why we studied um, ratios yesterday and just simple ratios is because, um, you know, today, like I said, we're going to be focusing on, well, first of all, if you take, if you have two similar sides and you divide any two sides that are they're similar, you're going to get the same number back. For example, if you have one shape that's twice as big as the other, if you take any given side and divide by the corresponding side, you can get two, right? Because it's twice as big. Or if you do the smaller to the big, you'll get one half. So what I like to do is I like to highlight. Um, there's actually two ways to do this one. But first of all, what you want to do for step two, okay, and I'll read it and I'll talk about what it means, is set up your ratio equation. So you are going to have an equation here. First of all, the first thing you need to highlight, the very first thing, is the side you're trying to solve for, okay? So everybody go ahead and do that. For example, one. Just go ahead and, you know, I wish you, you all had colored pencils or something, but go ahead and highlight that side because that's got to be part of the equation no matter what, okay? The next thing you're going to do is you're going to highlight the corresponding side on the smaller shape that you rotated, and it's going to be this one, okay? That's the side that corresponds to the bigger one, right? That's going to be the first part of your equation, and you're just going to take the first one you highlighted and divide by the second one. So it's going to be x over 8 for the first part of my equation. Okay? Now I am going to have an equal sign, because it's an equation, and then we'll talk about the other two. The other two you can actually, well for this one, you can, you can do either one and it won't matter. But then you're just going to pick two more corresponding sides. Uh, I'm just going to simplify this one, I'll just choose this bottom one. So it's going to be equal to 12 divided by 4. Okay, so... In other words, this side divided by this side. Because the ratio will be the same no matter what, because they're similar triangles. You have to highlight the one. I would recommend it. You don't have to. So 12 divided by 4 for the second part of my equation. And again, all we're going to do for right now, I'll just do step two for each of these, okay? You can already see what steps three and four are. Yeah, but it won't matter for this one, though. And in fact, yeah, it won't matter. It won't matter for this one. Okay. So, that's it. Just set up the equation. Let's move on to the, the next one, okay? Um... So the who can tell me the very first side you need to highlight for this one? Any side? Does it really matter? They're all the same. The one with the X. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you could do the other one. It doesn't matter. So just make sure you label, because that's the one you got to solve for, right? So you know it's going to be part of the equation. All right? Now, the corresponding side on my other triangle would be the 24. Okay? So the first part of my equation is going to be X over 24. Okay, bless you. What's wrong? wrong? All right, next. Um, what other two sides are you going to pick? Well, there's a, there's really 
you could do top or bottom, right? But you're going to do 35 divided by 28, right? So it's going to be equal to 35 divided by 28. Now, I do want to make a, a comment here. Make sure you always start with the same shape. Notice how I did x over 24, and then I started with the 35 divided by the, the 28. It's got to go that way, right? It's got to be the bigger divided by the smaller or vice versa. And it won't matter. Just make sure you're consistent. All right, so there's, there's our uh, second step for that example. Any qu questions on that? No. Okay. Who can tell me the first thing you're going to do? Which is the first side you're going to highlight for this one? This is example three. It says it on the board. X minus four. Okay, and it will correspond to the 40. Now, l listen, you went, always highlight the one that has the variable in it first, okay? And then, you're right, it's going to correspond to that one on top. So it'll be x minus 4 divided by 40. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is start with the same shape all right, and it won't matter which side you choose for this one. You can choose uh, 5. What's the corresponding side with 5 up here? 25. So it'll be equal to 5 over 25. But, to, but again, you have to start with this one because you started with x minus 4 here. So it'll be equal to 5 over 25. Okay, and then the last example we did... Example four, what's the first side you need to highlight? 3x minus 3, right? Because it contains the variable, and it's going to correspond to 4. So it's going to be 3x minus 3 divided by 4 equals, and then again, you have to start with this one, 18 divided by 3. So that's step two. So going back to example one, you know, when you cross multiply, um, you know, you multiply the bottom right by the top left, right? And then you do vice versa. So the first part of the equation is just going to be 4x. Okay. And then it equals, whoops, 8 times 12. And, you know, we'll get to solving these tomorrow. Today, I just want you to set that up. Okay? That's all you got to do for cross multiplication. Bottom right times top left equals bottom left times top right. That's why it's called cross multiply. Yeah, I just, I'm having issues right now with my screen. So I just wanted to make sure you could see that was multiply. Yeah, I know. It's 8 times 12. Let's go on to example 2. All right, here's the shapes we had for example two. So this one is going to be 28x. Turn around, please. Thank you. Equals 24 times 35. There you go. There's the dot. So again, what you're doing is you're multiplying bottom right times top left equals bottom left times top right. Any questions on that? Does it matter on the... Second part, that doesn't have the variable, does it matter which way you write it? Over here? Yeah. Nope. You can do 35 times 24, vice versa. Okay. Look up here, please. No, you weren't. Next up. All right, this one's a little bit different, okay, because, for example, 3, and remember, this was our shape for example 3, but we actually have an x minus 4, 
And so I'm just going to put parentheses around that because the 25 will be multiplying both of those. So it's going to end up being 25 times x minus 4. I know it's going to have issues with that. <laughs> um, let's just do it on different paper. 25 times x minus 4 equals, the other part will be the same. Okay, so it'll be equal to 40 times 5. 25 times x minus 4 equals 40 times 5. And remember, put it in parentheses. And the reason we're putting in parentheses is because when you multiply it, you'll be distributing it to the x and minus 4. And let's do it for the last one. Okay, here was our last example. 4. Let's go ahead and set this one up. So again, we want to put parentheses around the one that's got an x on it. And do bottom right times top left, so 3 times 3x three minus 3. And who wants to finish this one out equals what? Good, 4 times 18. So you can go ahead and work on the worksheet, just setting that up. This is a, these equations are easy, okay? They're not quadratic or anything. They're real easy to solve. The least you'll have to do is just do distribute. Distribution and then you get x by itself. We're going to finish this lesson off today by solving for x, solving for the unknown side. So let's go ahead and do that. We're at step four now. We've already cross multiplied. Now we're going to just solve for the variable. In this case, we have 4x equals 8 times. So the question is, how can we solve this? Well, it's pretty easy actually. We've only got one step to go. We're going to be all we really have to do is just get this variable by itself. So let's take a look. All right. Without having to multiply 8 times 12, we can actually just divide by 4 first to get x by itself. That won't affect cancel the 4s on the left-hand side. And this is example 1 again. So we got x equals 2 times 12. And that's because 8 over 4 reduces to 2. And then 2 times 12 equals 24. That's going to be our answer for this one. So what that means in terms of this diagram is that this side is 24. x equals 24. And you kind of see why that is. If this side is 3 times that side, then that means this side x is 3 times 8, which was 24. Okay, so this is 8 and this is 24. All right, let's go into example number 2. Again, we're at step four, solving for the unknown. We have 28x equals 24 times 35. And in order to solve that one, all I have to do is divide both sides by 28. You can plug this right into a calculator, 24 times 35 over 28. You get x equals 30. Very simple. In the context of this question, we've solved for this particular side, x equals 30. All right, again, it makes sense based on that scale factor. I believe this one would be 5 fourths. Okay, so 35 is 5 fourths of 28. And therefore, if you started at, if you wanted to figure this out, it'd be 5 fourths uh, of 24, which would be 30. <clears throat> so all we're doing is just solving for the variable, getting it by itself. Pretty simple. Let's go on to example three. This one's a little bit different because we had a binomial. So it would be x minus 4 times 25 equals 40 times 5 when we cross multiply. So after that point, we need to distribute the 25. It will be 25 times x and then 25 times 4, which is minus 100, equals 45 times, which is 200. Then you'll add 100 to both sides. You get 25x equals 300. Divide both sides by 25, and you get x equals 12. All right, and that's pretty simple. And again, in the context of this question, I would make this x equal to, double check here. Yes, it would make that x equal to 12. Okay, now, how you figure out this side length, you could just plug in 12. And this side would be 12 minus 4, which is 8. Okay, which makes sense because if this is a fifth this is a fifth of this corresponding side, and this must be a fifth, which would make this 8, right? So when you plug in 12, you get 8, and it makes sense. So always check to make sure your answer makes sense. Going on to example 4, 
we're solving for this x. I'm going to do the last step now, which is to distribute that. So we'll distribute the 3 to the 3x and the 3 to the minus 3. That will make 9x minus 9. And over here we have 4 times 18, which is 72. So we have 9x minus 9 equals 72. Add 9 to both sides. 9x equals 81. Divide both sides by 9. x equals 9. Right? And again, and we're doing step 4 now, which is just solving for the variable. We're getting it by itself in the context of this problem. That means this would be 9. If you want to figure this sign out, a side out would be 3 times 9, which is 27, minus 3, which is 24. Which again makes sense. If this is if this side is 4 thirds of this side, then that must be true for this one, which would be true. 24 divided by 18. This side divided by this side would give you 4 thirds. That's it. Just remember the four simple steps for solving these problems. You want to flip the shapes the same way, set up your ratio equation cross multiply and solve for the variable by getting it by itself. <clears throat> if you have any other questions about this lesson, let me know.